something was going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Now you may have already noticed we're missing Jeffra. Now apparently he's on the line trying to dial in. So uh, we're going to try and see if we can get him connected and uh, having to join the family. So don't worry about that. So importantly though, uh, welcome to this fantastic 13th episode of our show. And 13 for MPS and I is actually a bit of a big deal. And we also have to welcome our Facebook and YouTube viewers. And I'll explain a bit more about what YouTube later on. MPS, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm all right. It's a bit chilly out there in, in old Melbourne town, but not as cold as it has been. But uh, we're all nice and snuggly, buggly, all warm and toasty in here now. So Very good. Very good. All right, so we're going to have a bit of a conversation there. Jeffro, you wanted, this is something you wanted to bring up about actors who are famous for working in sci-fi related shows. So I'm going to pass it over to you and uh, yeah. we can go from there. Go for it. So uh, one of the things that I thought would be interesting is to be able to discuss actors that primarily their main roles seem to be in the science fiction, fantasy, and sort of some horror field. So uh, quite often you find actors do find themselves in a, a niche or a, a rut, so to speak. So I thought it'd be interesting to s pick out, say, a dozen of the uh, the ones that I thought of primarily have in terms of their IMDb uh, uh, filmography, mostly or a good portion of uh, uh, science fiction, fantasy film movies over, say, regular movies. So what I thought I'd do is open it up to the people out there to see if they can try and guess uh, some of the people that I thought of. So uh, I'll open it up to comments and uh, let's see if you can actually uh, think of one. If we do get a name, then we'll, we'll just pause that for the moment and then we'll bring up uh, some of their filmography credit thanks to uh, Dags on the uh, other end. So who do you think in terms of actors and all that might be typecast as mostly actors that have a Zachary Quinto? No, not on the uh, list, although good choice actually considering he's done um, uh, Heroes and, uh, and Star Trek. So good choice. Do we have any other names that people want to throw out there? I was actually going to say, it was a shame that Zachary Quinto couldn't play Spock in Discovery. That would have been a really nice, no, not Discovery. No, it was the other yeah. one. Um, was it Discovery? Yeah. Yeah, Discovery, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah, because it's set in the same time. And it's a shame they couldn't get him to play Spock because, you know, suddenly within the space of 10 years, you got Leonard Nimoy, Zachary Quinto, and this new dude playing Spock. would have been good if Zachary Quinto had been able to play him in Discovery as well. But uh, uh, but that is a good guess. So, uh, Do we have uh, any other guesses? Uh, oh, Mark Hamill. There we go. Oh, we Big Colin. So we're going right. to pause for a moment and bring up the old Mark Hamill uh, credits. Yeah, so, hang on, uh, yeah, hang on, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, it's coming. Go. So I know, so it's Christmas. So uh, there we go. There here you go. we go. So beginning from um, before <laughs> even. Uh, that uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> was that his, in his circus days? Was it? <laughs> uh, I think that was when he was probably probably auditioning for that uh, movie Perfect with Jamie Lee Curtis. Who knows? I don't know. I just, Actually, I you, just... missed the, you, you missed the movie there too, by the way, um, which would have fit Wing Commander. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, I thought it, when I was looking through the IMDb, it was a game, So, but you're right. But, I mean, before Star Wars, we had uh, Wizards. Uh, he's also appeared in um, uh, Amazing Stories. Slipstream, which is not a great movie, I think sort of uh, by that time he was doing crappy movies all around. Uh, the Giver, which is like a sort of a, a mech robot one, I think. And then, of course, he uh, really hit the big time uh, playing the trickster in The Flash. Uh, time Runner, Sequest, Space Cases. So uh, other than Star Wars, of course, and uh, all the different voice acting that he did, you know, sort of, and he's done a ton of it. Uh, Mark Hamill is indeed sort of a candidate for mostly doing science fiction and fantasy related movies. So well done. Here's a, here's a question for you. In the Giver, if he goes into McDonald's and orders a burger, does that become in, that MacGyver? Anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Patrick Stewart, I, I didn't have on the list because he does actually have quite a good resume of other movies other than the science fiction ones, but a good, good guess, Darren. Uh, do we have any other guesses that people want to try? 
Some of them are actually quite obvious. So some are a bit of some, are, some are really well-known names, and some are what I would call uh, character actors. So uh, if we don't have any more guesses, we may just have to break open the uh, the list of names. See, I would have thought Mark Hamill as a, as a sci-fi actor as such. Yeah, Star Wars and, and the Joker and, and, and the Flash. But for the rest of it, it's not a – to me, it doesn't come up as a prime sort of name in terms of, oh, sci-fi, must be Mark Hamill. You know, that's sort of – some of the others Tim, on your list you know, I agree with, but, yeah, some of them Tim are. Tim Donaldson, uh, yeah, he would, he would have been a good one, but uh, he's not on the list. Anyone else want to uh, – oh, give us time, says Michelle. So, uh, <laughs> so you can Google it all. Yeah. Um, MPS. What I was going to suggest is, uh, you're, you're right, but you might, Mark may have done all sorts of various things along the way, but when you think of sci-fi actors as whoever it was who Colin, I think, picked him, um, you just they're just known for that particular genre. It's like how Christopher Lee was always known for being in horror movies, right? Even yeah, if he did all these other things that weren't horror-related, you just got used to it. Uh, and it's almost like being typecast to a degree. Pl classic example is Adam West. He just did Batman. He didn't do anything else. As far as the world is concerned, he didn't appear yeah. anything else except Batman. So, like it or not, he was typecast. So, there you go. Actually, oh, yeah. I understand that, but what I'm saying is Mark Hamill, for instance, doesn't doesn't appear to me in that realm. You know, yeah. in terms of, you know, oh, we he, have a uh, we have a winner, I believe. William Shatner is uh, on our list too. Nah, not on my list, not here. Not on the list? Okay. No. It was like... I was going to put him on the list, but maybe he got left off at the last minute. How about well, he has a lot of non-sci-fi stuff, though. I mean, he's not just famous for Kirk, but he has done, like, your TJ hookers and stuff like that. So, oh, here we go. We have a winner. Billy Mummy, definitely on the uh, the list. Well yeah. done, Darren. Yeah, all right, we've got a picture here. There we go. At the screen. There we go. I mean, if you're, looking at, if you're looking at anybody's uh, credits, I mean, what an amazing collection of science fiction fantasy uh, stuff. As a, as a really young kid, you know, things like The Twilight Zone, Monsters, Bewitched, anything that was like fantasy related, he was doing guest appearances, I Dream a Genie, and then he hit big time, of course, as Will Robinson in Lost in Space. But then, you know, uh, he still continued through. We got Twilight Zone, the movie, uh, Captain America, the, uh, the, the Flash, so Superboy, uh, even something like Ultraman, which I didn't even know he was in. And then, of course, he uh, uh, hit the big time again with uh, Babylon 5, and that really propelled his, uh, his, his uh, fandom cred into, the, into, um, into, the, into orbit. And then, of course, uh, Deep Space Nine, Twilight Zone. There's a comic book, Men, which is a documentary. And then, of course, he appeared in Lost in Space, the new one again. Um, so yeah, there's uh, definitely uh, a, a man who's, whose lifetime is being spoken um, basically being uh, uh, mostly in um, science fiction and uh, fantasy uh, genre. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, sorry, Michelle. I, I don't know what I said, but yeah, right, TJ Hooker, well, I don't, can't remember what I said. Um, the funny thing about Lanier in Babylon 5 is that he just disappears at the end, end of the show and no one even knows what happened to him. And uh, if you ever got to hear John Michael Straczynski talking about him, he just left it completely ambiguous. There was never actually a proper answer, So, uh, which I thought was kind of groovy. So there you go. Very good. So we couldn't do we couldn't do Harrison Ford because I mean he had such a big uh, career in, in non science fiction uh, movies. Uh, Will Smith, M Michelle Keating, well done. Uh, Will Smith, okay, we have here we go. Uh, Will Smith on the uh, the list. Here we go. Look at that. So when you look at it, uh, there's Independence Day, all the Men in Blacks, yep. uh, and Wild Wild West, which is a fantasy movie, I Robot. I am legend. I mean, he's struggling a little bit there, but he's keeping with it. Hancock, again, not that great, but he's keeping with it. And then, of course, Suicide Squad and uh, most recently Bright. So uh, absolutely a uh, a man for the uh, the list. So yeah, uh, well done. You missed a couple there, Jeffrey. Sorry? I think you missed a couple there. Uh, oh, the, the, one they had. the one that he does with his kid uh, oh. Earth, or something like that. Yeah, yeah that was something, terrible. yeah. Yeah, that was oh, there. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. I think it's called After, After Earth or something After like that. Um, yeah, and I think there's one more from memory, but, yeah, you're pretty close. Well done. I left that out deliberately. That's um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, skill test of. level. <laughs> okay, do we have any other other guesses from uh, people or should we start yeah. breaking into some of the, uh, the ones that uh, we've got? 
I like bright. There you go. Yeah, R two D two Colin. Yeah, good on you, son. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> let's 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 give him a um, a, a Alan oh, Tudek. Good one. Nice. I hadn't thought of that, but uh, he has a lot of roles in other stuff. Tom Cruise. Well, he's had a lot of roles in other stuff, so I couldn't really uh, include him. Well, so you but could probably. Put... Sorry, go on. I was going to say you could put Alan in there a lot because you know, and some of it you can't see him like he was K two S O in Star Wars. Um, mm. the, the robot in iRobot, you know, but he's also, you know, you can sort of see him in, in, in those more than you can see probably some of the other actors, I would imagine. Yeah, he, Alan Tudyk has had a good career outside of fantasy, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good guess. Let's I break like him. Tom, yeah. Sorry, I like Tom Cruise because of the idea that he has done a lot of really, really big roles. The guy's a superstar, and yet he's not afraid to tackle the sci-fi subjects uh, and not just one movie, but a whole range of them. So, uh, and, I, and I like that when, you know, so like some actors, you just won't go near that genre at all, whereas he's happy to do that and other stuff, which is uh, very, very cool. So there you go. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Well, let's let's break out one of the um, the ones on the uh, the list. So just at random. <laughs> I like for Michelle. It's like trying to listen to us and participate. It's just driving me nuts. I can't handle it. <laughs> My brain hurts. It does hurt. Linda Hamilton. That is a good guess, but not. That is Linda. a very good guess. Let's yeah. let's break out. Let's break out a random one, Dax. Uh, yeah, all right. pick, pick one out of the list. All right, we'll just go here. All right, here we go. Add to the stream. There we go. Brenty. Brent Spiner. So uh, not the one that you probably would have thought of. But um, certainly, if you have a look at those um, credits there, he has been in a uh, heck of a lot of uh, science fiction. So uh, look at he this. was definitely more science fiction than any other sort of uh, genre that he's um, done. I like Anders' comment. Michael Ironside would have been a good one. And Marina Bart yeah. Baron, yeah, that is a good good pick, actually. She would, yeah, she would be a, uh, an absolute choice, although she's done a lot of... Um, um, uh, non-fantasy stuff, but it's interesting that that was mentioned because I saw in an episode of The Twilight Zone just the other night. So uh, yeah. very much would have been a, a perfect choice. Shall we yeah. um, break out another one, see uh, who uh, else is on the list? Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, I'm chucking these in at random. So we'll do a couple Chuck more. Chuck them in at random. Yeah, here we go. Carl Urban. Do we have any sort of people going, oh, I should have guessed that? So... Uh, <laughs> His, his main claim to fame, of course, is that uh, he was involved in a lot of that stuff that um, was made in New Zealand, like Hercules, Xena, Lord of the Rings. You know, if you need an, uh, an Australian or a New Zealand act actor, he was there. So, um, and of course, it big time with um, uh, Star Trek playing uh, McCoy, Dread, uh, excellent job in that. And then, of course, did the TV series uh, Almost Human, which was good. So... He uh, his his list of credits is is quite uh, extensive in that particular area. So he got uh, he got on the list. Um, so Colin uh, mentioned, sorry, go on. No, that's right. Uh, Colin mentioned Summer Glau. That's who I was thinking of too. Actually, okay, here we go. This is a, sh a very short list, uh, but it's a very very uh, obvious one. So there we go. There we go. Zoe Saldana, who uh, doesn't really have a lot of credits in her list, but when you think of all the, the Star Trek movies she's participated in, there's Avatar and there's two and three coming uh, soon and all the uh, the Marvel and the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Uh, she has done an awful lot in her career science fiction because just simply those uh, three franchises. Yeah, if you're going to get involved in three franchises, just make sure that they're like the biggest franchises in the world. And all she needs to do is appear in a Star Wars film or something Star Wars related, and that's it. She's got the set practically. So that's uh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, very impressive. So very cool. You got me in a roll now. So there you go. Who else we got? Right, so uh, let's let's another right. one out. I, I want to say that uh, I just want to say that I think Adams adds his answer to a different kind of fantasy was probably to the Summer Cloud comment. So, but just putting it out there. <laughs> I, saw, I didn't get it. It's like good ads. So there you go. All right, here we go. This is an obvious one. Here we go. Gina Torres. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely um, uh, got a lot of um, uh, science fiction fantasy, particularly a, a lot on um, television too. So, you know, she was uh, one of the main leads in Cleopatra 2025. Uh 
Angel Firefly, of course. So, um, yeah, she's um, – yeah, <laughs> she was – I mean, we could have interchanged her with uh, Linda Hamilton and such, but she was one that sort of immediately, for me, sp uh, sprang to mind. Very good. Now, we've got to say, unofficially, Ads, you're a bad, bad dude. So, there you go. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, geez, that's funny. All right. Uh, and I'm going to pull up somebody a little bit more. This one you're going to have to explain, uh, Jeffrey, because. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Now, so let's go to another famous guy, another famous dude. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go, kids. Christopher Lloyd. I mean, what an amazing career this guy has had. And uh, I was almost thinking one of the clues could be actors you see at. Uh, at collect affairs and, and that sort of thing because uh, Christopher Lloyd certainly fits that. You know, he does the the, the fan um, uh, signature circuit. But, you know, starting off with uh, Star Trek th three, Michael mm -hmm. Bonzo, of course, Back to Future, uh, Who Framed Rob Your Rabbit? What a fantastic movie. And then all these character um, uh, roles like Adam's Family, My Favourite Martian. Uh, so... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the uh, the ones with major cred in that um, science fiction area. I like what Michelle said. Keanu Reeves. Keanu would be a good one because he's got a lot of sci-fi and fantasy and a lot of mainstream stuff as well. So he has actually done very well for himself, which is kind of really yeah. Um, so yeah, depending on how he feels. Because Keanu, I mean, you can count Bill and Ted. You know, it's it's science fiction of sorts. So yeah. you know, well, see, fantasy, yeah. fantasy like Dracula. Yeah, even with um, uh, Christopher Lloyd, if you include board games, he did Clue. Mm. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Which is one of my right. favourite films. Very good. Here's another one for you, everybody. Jason Momoa. So not a, um, a big collection, a bit like Zoe Zaldana, but certainly um, uh, runs on the board in terms of most of his movies are sort of fantasy related. I never saw Stargate Atlantis, so it'll be uh, interesting if anyone had any comments about that. But he was in that for a long time. Game of Thrones being the uh, the one that broke him. I haven't seen Conan the Barbarian, so I don't know what that's like. Uh, but then, of course, once he got Aquaman and uh, uh, and such, then uh, he became a superstar. And now we've got him uh, playing Duncan Idaho in the new June. So that'll be interesting to see that uh, uh, later when it comes out. Very cool. And uh, Colin just mentioned he had a good experience with Christopher Lloyd being near the dude. So, yeah, those it's one of those sort of fandom moments that you got to love and actually treasure forever. Uh, we'll go through one more, okay? Yeah. Uh, so before we wrap it up and move on, so here we go. Here's a bit of a famous one. Here we go. He's a little bit squashed in the photos, but, you know. <laughs> Kurt Russell, yeah. So, it. Um, I mean, it started off fairly young for him. He was, uh, you know, a boy actor that sort of did a lot of – Tel television stuff and then, of course, went on to do the Disney uh, stuff. In the 80s, of course, his career was resurrected with um, John Carpenter and, of course, he has done um, things like uh, Stargate, Escape from L.A., the sequel, Soldier, Guardians being the most recent one. So he was um, he was on the list for me. So uh, you, you could probably that, include um, Big Trouble in Little China as well if you really wanted oh, to. Oh, yeah, of course, yes. Yes, so there you go. Very so, good. Uh, we we got a few people that um, we got a few people that guessed right. So well done, guys. So uh, I don't know whether you agree with some of the choices or whether you disagree. So uh, uh, just my personal opinions in terms of uh, that, and I wish I could have chosen some others. But uh, yeah, that's um, we had a few other ones there, like uh, Tony Todd, who uh, has done a lot of genre work for uh, Star Trek and. Um, and all sorts of other things, and uh, oh yeah, too. Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't realise who it was. I will put Tony Todd up because I didn't realise. Just I recognise the face, but I didn't recognise the actor. So um, he's a yeah. I'll put this one up. There you go. There you go, Jeffro. Where are you, man? I'm. Um, oh yeah, Jeff. You got to host your show, son. They're all looking at yeah. you. There we go. So um, yeah, he's he's one of those um, uh, actors that's really excelled. In the, uh, in the in the science fiction fantasy section, so his primary uh, thing is doing guest parts and a whole different things. So uh, yeah, as you can see, it's like I could only just barely fit it all on the um, 
on the actual page there. So, um, but he does a lot of horror stuff as well. Yeah, you can tell you've got a decent actor who's got a great career when they pop up in Star Trek anywhere, and most of them all have it. True, before. and he <laughs> and he he had a lot of work uh, primarily playing um, uh, Klingons. Yep. Ah, oh, yes, yes, because he has that voice that just resonates so well. So there you go. Yeah. Very good stuff. All right, cool. All right, so uh, that actually brings us to the end of the episode. How good is that? So don't forget, you can actually see the replay of this on Facebook and you will be able to see certain segments like this one uh, on uh, YouTube once we start getting things up and running uh, over there. So if you go over there currently, you've got all the Moss Eisley monthly episodes there where you can watch. You can see MPS and I <gasps> Google on as we often do. And uh, but otherwise, in the interim, uh, see you guys if you're coming to on Saturday to see the Austrian guys, it'd be fantastic. And uh, other than that, we're all good and done. So, there we go. So, in the interim, what can we say except stay nerdy? Stay nerdy. Okay, Eric. <laughs>